see we're picking people who are the farthest away from the stairs. It's part of our, our way to stretch the evening out to a full evening of entertainment. Welcome, John, to uh, the story Thank slide. You. Hello there. Um, so my story about hidden talents uh, takes place a long time ago when I was about 10 years old. And uh, I grew up in Upper Darby, and it was uh, one of those long weekends where I had some uh, big Irish family and a uh, family that had a lot of older cousins lived out in Chester County and had a big farmhouse. And uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, fishing and swimming and BB guns and baseball and that kind of thing. So, uh, like I said, it was a beautiful weekend, and we had a huge family, and everyone came out to barbecue and drink on Friday, and we played all sorts of games, and got sunburned, and then Saturday, slept over, and throughout the entire weekend, I, being best friends with the youngest in the family of eight kids, was getting pummeled every day, and drowned in the pool, and left out in like the woods, and, you know, all the romantic visions I had of this wonderful weekend with my cousins slowly started to disintegrate, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a long weekend, and ended up being, you know, a Sunday night, and everyone, it was about 10.30, everyone was already drunk and asleep, and all the kids were kind of off doing their own thing, and I was left to my own devices in a room. Just kind of staring there while my cousin Sean was like my friend was downstairs. All the other sisters were upstairs and it's this big old house and I'm laying there in bed and staring at the wall and I'm reading like a wrestling magazine and there's this weird old shrunken head on the ceiling and I start thinking like, I don't know, just like an idea occurs to me. So I sneak down into the basement where Sean and, and Peter are like doing, you know, bench presses and I go around the corner and I make like this noise. And, this is like 84 or so, like, so the Darth Vader sound was like, you, you know, wasn't done on, you know, too many times, but it was kind of like a, <sighs> you know, went around the corner and made some footsteps on the stairs and then ran upstairs and did the same thing upstairs, like, <sighs> kind of like spooky sounds, it's real quiet, and then as I'm doing this, I start hearing, like, rolling thunder, and, like, out the windows, there's, like, heat lightning coming, and, you know, everything's real quiet. I go back into the room, and 30 seconds later, my cousin Sean and Peter come booking upstairs. I hear them run upstairs, and they run over, and, like, you know, Sean comes into my room, he's like, yo, did you hear something? I'm like, I don't know, I'm just reading the magazine. <laughs> Peter runs into Andrew's room, he's like, you know, whittling like a dagger, he's like, you know, the future NRA guy. Girls, this is like 84, big hair on the phone, you know, snapping gum. But they're all kind of like weirded out, and they all come out into the hallway, and everyone's like, did you hear that? You know, I didn't hear anything. And meanwhile, like, everything starts to go bad at once. Like, it's been an exhausting weekend. Everyone's fried, sunburned, exhausted, tired. My cousin Sean, who's my age, is kind of a wuss, so he's like white and like hyperventilating. And uh, the storm starts getting really strong, like this like rolling thunder and heat lightning starts smashing down on the house, like And like everyone's like working themselves into a frenzy, like we're on the third floor and the parents live on the second floor and you have to go down the stairs and around the corner and across the house to get to their room. And they were drunk and passed out for hours anyway, so even if we screamed, we couldn't wake them up. And there was a storm coming, and all the lights were on anyway. So this storm begins to build, and like everyone's collecting weapons at the top of the stairwell, thinking that there's an intruder in the house. And Sean and Peter are like, yeah, I heard these footsteps. Like, when did you hear them? And they're like, well, we heard them right before you guys ran upstairs. And everyone's like, well, that means that, like, you know, the person's downstairs. Like, someone's around right here. And my cousin, Steph, at the time, was kind of like, you know, holding like her phone, it's like coming out through her room, like stepping back against the wall. And at about that moment, the lights go off. And everyone at the same moment sort of realizes that we're upstairs, and after talking about it, these footsteps that had come up the stairs had happened right after, right before everyone had gotten to the top floor. So Steph realizes now, like through this like weird logic, that whoever was in the house is now not on this floor, but she's standing against the door that goes up to the attic. 
And like I said, lights go off. Thunderous like rattling. And Steph screams, like she realizes that she's standing up against the door where this like, you know, killer is, is about to like pop out and murder us all. My cousin Sean is throwing up in the bathroom. <laughs> and I've created all this chaos and everyone's got like lamps and like bats and everything you can imagine. And my cousin Peter turns to me and like he looks at me and he's like, Are you what is what is going on? Did you do this? And I was like, I, I thought I was Johnny Potter. I thought I had like somehow after all this weekend staring at this like shrunken head had created this unbelievable morass of like, you know, problems and crying and everything like that. I thought I was magical. That was what I thought my hidden talent was. For the time. I thought I'd done all this. <laughs>